Hi, my name's Stephanie. I'm a psychologist and ABA therapist. Um, I work at Western Plains Psychology in Caroline Springs. Um, I've been a psychologist for five years, um, working primarily with families and children in a variety of settings. Um, so today's presentation is just to have a bit of a discussion about some of the struggles um, families and relationships are facing with COVID um, and some of the um, strategies that we can use on a personal relationship and family level. So working today with Melton City Council Learning Directory, um, we're gonna talk to you about some strategies and also the stresses that we've been facing and how to, how to balance that and reduce those stresses that have been impacting on the family, individual and relationship units. So to begin with, um, let's have a bit of a chat about some of the struggles families and relationships have been facing over the last few months with COVID. Um, we've seen an increase in um, financial struggles, people losing their jobs or reduced hours, um, remote learning from schools, which has, you know, seen people, you know, whole families be locked away inside together. Um, it's been a it's been a big struggle and it's seen an increase in massive anxiety from every person in a family unit, especially when we look at a relationship and um, financial struggles and, you know, that insecurity with jobs. Um, we tend to take it out on our partners or our, in our relationships and tend to shut down and we stop doing the things that are good for our relationships, like communication and spending time together um, and feeling positive and happy in that relationship. Um, and with the increase of, you know, kids being home and not having that opportunity to go out and have their time where they can run around and enjoy themselves, they also cause a lot of pressure and stress on that on a relationship and on the family unit. Um, so the next, the next part of this conversation will be about strategies on helping individuals with their own mental health, um, helping within that, rela that relationship unit, how do, we, how do we work together in a partnership, in a relationship to have a positive and open communication and then how do we help kids and um, have that communication with them on what we can do to help reduce that anxiety and how they're feeling. Let's start with talking about something that's easy for all of us. Most of us know what we should be doing for our own mental health. Um, you know, we talk about exercise, we talk about um, spending time on our own, um, we talk about, you know, doing things that we enjoy. But during COVID, we've seen a lot of people stop doing those things um, with the closures of, closures of gyms, not being able to go outside of our house. A lot of people have stopped doing the things that we find good for ourselves. Um, so it's really important to always keep ourselves in mind and at the front of our mind when we're looking at how we're feeling and what we need at the moment. Exercise is still really, really important, regardless of if it's just a walk around the block. Just getting out of the house is really, really important for feeling positive and in increasing, you know, all those lovely positive endorphins in our brain that keep us happy and calm and being able to deal with the additional stress that we're seeing. Um, I think also trying new hobbies and still keeping on top of things like our, you know, arts and crafts hobbies, you know, learning a new skill like cooking or a new language or having that time where we can even meditate if, um, if that's something that is really important to you. To be able to just centre and be able to have that alone time where it's just you and being able to ground your own thoughts and your own feelings from everything else that's going on particularly with kids and running of a household and everything like that it's very hard sometimes to have that 
alone time and it's one of the most important things that we need regardless of the hundred other things we've got to do even if it's five ten minutes just to read a book or um, you know make yourself a cup of coffee or have a 20 minute bath after the kids go to bed that is going to be the thing that helps you know that next day it's and make it a little bit easier and reduce that stress so much more than trying to plow through and that's sometimes what we try to do is plow through and be the the tough person that can get through but it's all those little things that we can do and they're small things that just make our day a little bit easier they make our make us feel a little bit more positive and it's it's also important to not feel guilty for having our alone time having that time where we just unwind having that time on our own that we can do something for ourselves um, and feeling guilty is you know sometimes inevitable because we do still have things to do but having that time on our own is also going to help everything else that we've got to do so much easier um, so it's really important to you know not be so hard on ourselves and to put ourselves forward first every now and then so in terms of saying that we should have our alone time a big thing is connecting and keeping that relationship with our partners positive a lot of us are seeing that our you know our partners with a home where they're together now um, we're spending so much more time with each other that it is becoming a bit more stressful you know you're feeling on top of each other and we stop doing those things that we enjoy doing as a couple as a relationship you know we've stopped doing date nights we've stopped doing you know spending that time to talk and um, it be positive because they're around all the time um, but that is a really important thing to still keep in mind is having alone time but also having couple time having that time where you do something together um, you know even if it's going for a walk together um, you know cooking together particularly cooking is a good um, chance to find a new skill with each other learn to work together communication um, it can help to really build something positive within that relationship and it's trying to hold on to that idea that we don't have to stop doing the things that we, we know are good for our relationship. Um, and it might just look differently than, you know, going out and have for dinner and act, at an actual restaurant. It might be having date night at home where, you know, you might get takeout or, you know, get the kids to cook and, but it's just dinner with you and your partner. Um, but in, in our relationship, communication is really, really important. Communicating with our partner on what we want, what we need, um, and not being fearful of saying, I need alone time, or I need you to be a bit more present, or I need to sit down and tell you that I'm really struggling with being stuck inside due to COVID. It's about opening that space up and letting each other know what we can do together and what the other person can do to help us to work together and make it easier for us because this is not easy and we can very easily get sucked into our own anxieties and our own fear and our own thoughts of what this what this virus is doing to us and what the changes are and what the stresses are and being able to fill in your partner on this is how I feel and this is what I think we can do or this is what I want will make your relationship feel so much more stable so much so more so much more open in that process um, and communication will then be able to put those structures into place of 
not feeling guilty for I'm going to have alone time or let's have date night tonight. It allows that free flowing effect that, you know, you can put things into place and have a, have some security in your relationship. Um, and it also might be important to open that communication because to know how the other person's feeling. It's, it's very hard sometimes to actually go, oh, I need to talk about what I want um, and what I need right now because we've got, we're worrying about job security, we're worrying about stress, we're worrying about, you know, remote learning. Um, and we forget that we also have a relationship and we have someone that needs us as well. And those are important things in keeping that relationship together. Um, and so communication and finding that communication is really important. Um, even if it's five minutes, 10 minutes or sitting down and saying, you know, let's have a chat every Friday night after the kids go to bed with, um, with a coffee and being able to say, this is how I'm feeling is really important. And it's sometimes it needs to be structured, like saying, let's do it every Friday, or sometimes it's, it flows and it can be a bit more open, but whichever way it works for you and whichever way you can implement that into your relationship is going to make it so much more uh, so much stronger in in that relationship and also it increases security we've got so much insecurity in our lives right now with like i said finances jobs not knowing what we can go do and what we can't go do so being able to openly communicate on this is what i want and knowing that your relationship is going to be stable and there for you is going to make you feel more secure it's going to make all this instability so much easier to cope with um, and the thing is with communication is it's not easy it's not easy to begin with and that's why i always say it's nice to sometimes set that time aside to say let's talk every friday night for five minutes about how i'm feeling because after you get used to that, then it becomes a bit more free flowing. And because we don't wanna add stress to an already stressful situation, the communication is really, really important. And you'll find a massive difference in not getting on each other's nerves, not getting frustrated with each other, because there's no wall up in what you want. There's no oh, maybe they want this or maybe they want that. It's very direct and you can know what you want from them, um, which you know, makes everything else run so much smoother at home. And you'll find it's easy, it's, it becomes a bit more free flowing and balanced when you can do that. Talking about communication, this is really important for when we look at helping and managing the anxiety of our kids in this time. Um, a lot of kids are really, really unsure. They're really anxious about, you know, how they could get sick, can they get sick, will they get sick? And they, they don't necessarily get a lot of straight answers or their understanding is a bit different to ours. Um, we have the capacity to investigate and make our own judgments where they're not at that same level yet. So communication from us is really important um, and open communication is important because we can sit down and we can express to them, you know, some of our concerns, maybe some of our feelings, some of our understanding, which might help them, but it also helps them to open up to us about what they're feeling. If we're not open with our thoughts, our wants, our everything that helps us, then our kids are gonna be closed off to saying, oh, can we do this? You know, I really, you know, I really miss doing all my sports. Um, and they're gonna 
they're going to close off from communicating with us and, and that creates a lot of frustration and tension at home because we're not we're not understanding what's underlying all that frustration and pent up energy particularly at this time um, so communication is not just good for our relationship it's great for our kids um, because you know a lot of kids are you know worried about when they're going to go back to sport when they see their friends and balancing that and having that open dialogue is really really good for them to know oh you can go you can't go see your friends right now but maybe in a couple of weeks or we've got to wait till these dates until we can go do that um, and in, you know instilling in them the things that we do for ourselves um, like I've said earlier we really do we need to do things for ourselves that are really important and being open with our kids and can enable them to also learn those skills learn to do the things that they like and make them feel good um, without feeling guilty from such a young age and learning those skills at such a young age means that they can self-soothe they can help themselves when they're feeling stressed when they're feeling anxious and if your kid is feeling less stressed less anxious less frustrated with the situation you're going to have see a healthier relationship in with your children and also a healthier relationship in the family um, because you you're not having such frustrated and you know emotionally unbalanced kids um, and also them seeing that healthy relationship that you can instill with your partner is really important because that's what they're learning on how to communicate with their friends with their you know teachers with um, you know, you know, potent with their potential partners. That is what they're learning on how to compromise, how to communicate, and they can see that you know, although things are stressful and you know the worst things can possibly happen, um, that they can get through, and that there is some hope and some security in that family unit. Um, so I think overall, it's. It's always looking at, you know, if you've got kids, it's a three tiered system. If it's just you and a partner, it's your two tiered system. And if it's just you, it's just you. But those, we've always got to look and be continuing to nurture um, and be open with each one of those. Not just being open and honest with our partners and our kids, but also being open and honest with ourselves. What do we want? What do we need? And being able to then communicate that to our other people in our lives. And you'll find that you'll find more structure, you'll find more security and more stability in your family, in your relationship, when you can take that step back and say, this is what I want, this is what I need. And being going, I'm comfortable in saying that to someone and being able to compromise if you know, maybe it doesn't fit in exactly the way it looks or it needs to look for me. Um, it's not always going to work out the way that we need it to. And, you know, you might not always get date night on the nights that you want um, because of kids or sports or um, just work. Um, but it's being able to be flexible and, again, open communication to say, OK, it's not going to work today, but let's do it, you know, in two days time that constant feedback and communication is really important and it helps to set up that structure of everything else. And it's not easy keeping all those three things balanced in a family. Um, and it's a constant juggle and it's a constant analysis of looking at where am I, where am I too top heavy or where am I neglecting so that I can rebalance that and take a step back and look at what's unbalanced and how do I rebalance that? Because, you know, even looking at, you know, being too much on your own is not going to be a good thing. But, you know, being too much maybe with a partner or with the kids is not going to benefit you either. 
it's looking at constant balance of what's going to work and what's going to be most beneficial for you, your partner and your family. Um, and that is different to everyone. Um, and it's different with every situation. And, but everyone has that capacity to look at, look at what's working and what's not working, take that step back and be able to do that. Um, and keeping everyone in our family secure in that, in our changes, in our lives and working with each person. So some of these tips are really easy to put in place and sometimes they're gonna work and sometimes you still might find that it's a bit difficult and hard to deal with situations that are going on. Um, if you are struggling or if anyone is struggling within your family, please speak to your local doctor um, ask for a mental health care plan and book in to see your local psychologist um, that can help you and maybe just put, you know fine tune some of the things that you're doing or just give you a different perspective on um, what's going on for you outside of the family because sometimes it's easier to get an external point of view than someone that's going to tell you all the nice fuzzy things that we like to hear rather than things that we need, we probably need to hear um, to help make us, you know, a bit better and a bit better able to cope. Um, but I hope some of these tips are helpful in, you know, helping manage your own stress and anxiety um, and also help create healthier relationships at home with your partners, with your kids um, and as a family unit. Um, and I'd like to thank Melton City Council um, for giving me this opportunity.